Kami Sato Ayato, our favorite sword swinging, hydro dripping, bobo drinking character is getting a rerun. I've played Ayato extensively and seeing that his rerun is here, I want to share all my thoughts on him and whether you should pull him. More importantly, I'll also go over how he stacks up to other hydro DPSs to explain if you should get him or just say for other hydro units. So let's quickly go over the importance of his kit to better understand what he can do. First with his normals, as cool as they are, you'll basically never be using them. You can ignore them and you should instead focus on his skill since this is his main source of damage. How his skill works is that once you activate it, Ayato will be in the special state where if you normal attack, Ayato will perform a special slash attack to enemies. These slashes are automated, meaning that you don't have to do any sort of aiming or anything special. You really just have to attack enemies and maybe move should an enemy be far. These slashes are performed at a good speed and deal good damage. They're a very comfy way to attack enemies because honestly you really don't have to do much. You just activate his skill and hold attack and Ayato will do everything. It's a very easy and efficient way to deal damage. A very useful and satisfying thing of the skill is that these attacks do have AoE. If there's multiple enemies on the field, you should be able to damage most if not all enemies. Now in regard to his burst, when Ayato's burst is cast, there will be a field of lotuses where Hydro is passively applied. I have to admit, the burst doesn't deal a lot of damage, it's a good way to deal more damage to enemies, but it isn't any form of significant damage. But the burst does make up for this in many ways. First is the buff it gives to normal attacks when it is cast. This is very useful since all normal attacks will be buffed a good amount, which Ayato's skills do count towards. So if you cast Ayato's burst and then use his skill, Ayato will get a nice buff in skill damage. On top of the damage, the burst deals on its own. Beyond this, it's just the way the burst works is really good. It has a wide AoE so many enemies will be affected by it, and it applies a good amount of hydro to reliably perform reactions. With the way it works and just the fact that it's passive, it can be played in all kinds of teams. For instance, his burst works very closely to that of Ganyu's, and if you pair them in a freeze team, just by their bursts alone, you'll perma-freeze enemies, making freeze much stronger and much easier to perform. All in all, Ayato's kit is really good. Though it's by no means broken or game changing, it's still not a kit that should be overlooked or seen as bad. It's a very solid kit that allows him to deal quite strong damage. Given the ease of playing him, the way he's able to buff himself, and just the fact that his abilities are so good, Ayato is a very solid and very comfy character that will almost never let you down in a fight. Now with this kit covered, let's get into how it is to build Ayato. Artifact wise, Ayato has a huge variety of artifacts to use. There's the classic options of Gladiator, which if you're in endgame, you should have a good set waiting for him. There's Heart of Depth, Retracing Bolide, Shimanama's Reminiscence, Echoes of Offering, and more recently, Nymph Stream. As well as Marichalsi Hunter, if you play him with Farina, not to mention all the mixing and matching you can do with these sets. So as you can see, Ayato has a whole list of artifacts he can use, and this flexibility also applies to his swords. In terms of 5 stars, Ayato can use most of them, like the Aquila, Jade Cutter, and Mist Splitter. For 4 stars, there's the Battle Pass Sword which is great for him, but there is also the free to play swords of the Flute, Lion's Roar, Kageyuchi, and the Ishin. So when it comes to building, Ayato is very friendly, he can use all kinds of artifacts and weapons, both old and new. This makes him much easier to build than some other characters since you don't have to go out of your way and grind for some specific set or weapon, instead you probably already have some good options for him, so building him should be much faster and much less of a headache than usual. On the topic of flexibility, a great thing to note is that Ayato is flexible in his builds. Though Ayato is commonly played as a DPS, he can be played as a fairly good sub DPS. With his normal attack buff, he can be a great pairing with other DPSs, for example his sister, he can also dish out a good passive hydro to enemies. So by pulling Ayato, you're not just getting a unit stuck in one role, but a unit that can be played in different roles and that can be used in multiple teams. Now let's shift to Ayato's teams and speak about how they fare. On the matter of his teams, I'll first talk about his supports. This is important since, naturally with him being a DPS, he's gonna want some supports that buff him. And there are instances where a unit will only have one support to pair them with, or their support is essentially locked behind a constellation. But thankfully this is not the case and actually the complete opposite. 
For Ayato, there's actually a good amount of supports he can be played with. Unsurprisingly, since he scales off of attack, Benny is great for him. Furthermore, all Enema units are really good with him. It's just Kazwa and even Jean if she's high constellation and has the attack speed buff. Similarly to Jean, there's Yunjin who at C6 will increase Ayato's attack speed a good bit. But even then, before she C6, she's still a very good support for him since she'll massively buff his normal attack damage. The last support to note is the recently released Farina. For those that haven't skipped Farina to get Ayato, you can absolutely pair him with her and do really well. As long as you pair him with Jean or a proper healer needed for Farina, Ayato will deal much higher damage than usual. So again, when it comes to supports, Ayato is covered. As mentioned, unlike other units, Ayato isn't locked to just one certain support, nor is his supports locked behind C6. In my view, this is a very good thing about him, because you don't have to stress about getting a support for him. Just like his artifacts, you probably already have some for him. This is a really nice aspect of him, especially in the context of the Abyss. Ayato doesn't have to fight for or require a popular support that many teams need. Moving to his specific teams, the first thing to note is that Ayato has a lot of teams. This lends to the fact that he's Hydro, but also to his versatility. Literally, you could build Ayato to fit any certain type of team and he'll perform in it quite well. Some notable teams are first, his Vape team, which is really strong. You can build Ayato as a Vape DPS, giving him the Lion's Roar, and with the proper rotation, he performs really well in this team. As a DPS, this is one of my favorite teams to play him in, since in this team he deals really good damage. Next is his aforementioned Permafree setup. Again, his burst really shines here when combined with Ganyu's. Though in this team, you may not see very high damage numbers, but know that you are dealing a lot of damage since enemies will be frozen together and taking damage from multiple sources. There is also his Dendro team in which he's great for. For instance, Burgeon. Here Ayato is a great choice because of the ease in playing him, as well as his on-field and off-field Hydra application. You're also able to pair him with his friend Tomo, which is always nice. Last but not least is his hyper carry team. Now though Ayato is not really meant to be a hyper carry, he can still be fashioned into one, with enough investments and the right supports. The addition of Farina has really added to this team, as well as his other teams since she'll make him much stronger than before. So as I've been covering Ayato, there's only been positives to him, so let's switch gears and go into his negatives. The first is his energy issues. It's kind of ironic, Ayato does actually have a passive talent that's supposed to better his energy regeneration, so you know, you'd expect him to have no energy problems, but he does. The passive isn't all that good, so you'll need to find ways to battery Ayato, since as mentioned, his burst is really good for him. There is of course many ways to fix this, so it's not a big deal, but more of a slight annoyance. And that's it. There's really no other weakness Ayato has, which honestly captures just how good he is as a character. He's a unit that brings loads of positives with almost no negatives. Now that you know all about Ayato, an important question arises which is how does he stack with other Hydra DPSs? Let's start off with Nevelet, since Nevelet is the latest Hydra DPS. Assessing them both as DPSs, without a doubt, Nevelet wins. Nevelet wins in terms of the damage he outputs with his charge attack, which is much stronger than that of Ayato slashes, but also in terms of the frequency in which Nevelet can deal that high damage. What I mean by this is that when you're playing Nevelet, he can perform his strong charge attacks three times in one rotation. Of course, in these three attacks, you'll be accruing a lot of damage. And for Ayato, he's only able to perform his skill for about 6 seconds, and then you have to wait for another 6 seconds. And don't get me wrong, a 6 seconds cooldown is very short, but when you factor in just how much damage Nevelet's charge attack deals, Ayato does fall short. Now when it comes to Child, honestly I would say it's a draw. This is because in certain areas, one unit will win over the other, while in another area, he'll lose to the other. For example, when it comes to personal damage, I'd say Ayato wins over Child. But in terms of team damage, Child wins, especially if he's in his international team. Moreover, Child can nuke enemies, while Ayato's damage is more spaced out. Also, Ayato has more ease of play and convenience and more flexibility, I'd say. So when it comes to comparisons with other Hydro units, Ayato doesn't particularly fare well. He loses to Nevelet, and when it comes to Child, Ayato does not definitively win. Instead, it's more of a preference choice. 
but I want to restate that though this comparison may not point Ayato in the best light, he's still without a doubt a good and worthwhile DPS. Though he may not definitively win over his Hydro peers, the pros I mentioned still stand, so because of the pros, of which are many, he's still a viable and I'd say competitive choice when looking for a Hydro DPS. Given all the things I've mentioned, should you pull Ayato? I'd recommend that if you either like Ayato or want a strong or solid versatile DPS, then you should wish for him. These are the exact reasons why I pulled for him, and I must say I am very glad that I got him. Alternatively, if you're looking for a very comfy and easy to play DPS, then definitely wish for Ayato. Ayato does most of the work when it comes to playing him, you as a player do very little, and is probably the best DPS when it comes to ease of play. On the other hand, if you already have other Hydro DPSs like Nevelette or Child, his pull value goes down since you already have units that fulfill his role, and as such, I'd recommend not to get him, since if you do get him, you're not getting anything new or significant, so there's very little reason to get him outside of you liking him. Also, if your goal is to wish for the best DPS, then I wouldn't recommend Ayato. Though in my eyes, Ayato is quite a good DPS, I don't necessarily think this because of the damage he outputs. He outputs good damage, but certainly nothing insane. Nothing akin to Nevelet damage, who is actually a top tier DPS. If this is your case, then I'd advise not to wish for Ayato. Continue saving, and either wish for Nevelet or another unit that is regarded as a top DPS. Well everyone, that is my review of Ayato. I hope my review helped you, and if it did, please let me know in the comments, as well if you agreed or disagreed with my review. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, and with that, thank you all for watching, take care, and thank you all once again.